All right, thanks for watching. And today we will prove one of the most important theorems in all of math, namely that square root of two is irrational. So it is a very classical proof by contradiction. So what we will do, let's suppose that square root of two is rational. So suppose square root of two is rational. What does that mean? Assume that square root of two is the ratio of two integers. So square root of two equals p over q, where p and q are integers and q is not zero. And moreover, we will assume that this fraction is a reduced fraction, which means p and q have no factors in common. And this will be very important in a second. So without loss of generality, assume P and Q have no factors in common. By the way, WLOG without loss of generality, but in Soviet Russia, generality loses you. So, now, why can we assume that? So, suppose, let's say, P and Q have a factor of three in common. So, suppose, let's say, P, it's three times something, 3K, and Q is 3L, but then the point is we can just cancel out three from that fraction. Then P over Q then just becomes three K over three L. The threes disappear and that's K over L. And basically then you can just repeat the proof with K over L. k over l. And that works. And you know, because it's a fraction, we can only, only need to do this, you know, finitely many times. So in fact, it's not such an unreasonable assumption. All right, so that was the first step. You assume it's a fraction, you assume that they have no factors in common, and the rest is just playing around with this identity. So second step is take Square root of two equals p over q. And how about we square both sides? Then square root of two equals p over q. Okay, square both sides. I know I'm doing a black pen, red pen move, so I'm squaring this in uh, black pen and red pen. And so then what we get is two equals p squared over q squared. And well, let's just do some little algebra. So in other words, p squared, it's 2q squared. But that's very cool, because then what we get is p squared is 2 times something, and therefore p squared has actually is actually even. So that's what I wanted to get at. p squared is even. And the cool thing is, if the square of an integer is even, then so is that integer itself. So therefore, p is even. And why is that true? Why is p squared even? Why does that imply p is even? Why? Because of the contrapositive. So equivalently, All you need to show is that if p is odd, then p squared is odd. And this you can just show directly. So assume p is, let's say, 2k plus 1, and show that p squared is also 2 something plus 1. So this we will take as given, and therefore what we get is that p is, uh, let me just follow the notation here, um, P is, yes, a 2M. I wasn't, I was debating between 2M and 2N, so P is 2M. 
Of course, because pi m, right? Okay, makes sense. So p is 2m for some integer m. So m in z. And remember that, so p is even, p equals 2m, and the nice thing is, so we have this new ansatz, this new formulation, and we can plug this back into here. And in fact, that's what the third step is. So again, the third step is plug p, plug pi m into p squared equals 2q squared. So what we get, we get 2m squared equals 2q squared. And that gives you 4m squared equals 2q squared. But then we can cancel out a factor of 2 and you get 2q squared equals 2m squared. But again, what does that tell you? It tells you that q squared is even. And therefore, q is even. So in other words, q equals 2 times n, where n is some integer. OK. So that's good. What have we found? Well, we found that P is 2M and Q is 2M. But that's a problem because notice now P and Q have a common factor, which is 2. So P and Q have a factor of 2 in common. But we assumed that they, do, they didn't. So in other words, this contradicts uh, with our loss of generality. So again, we found that P is even, Q is even, therefore P and Q have a common factor of two, and then that's the issue. So this contradicts. With our loss of generality. Oh, no. Uh, so contradiction with what? Contradiction with the assumption that square root of 2 is rational. So square root of 2 is irrational. Ta-da! The box of victory. And so, in other words, this is, in theory, our first irrational number that we encountered, but there are many more. There's like square root of three, there's cube root of two, there's ln of two, and of course, the two most famous ones, e and pi, those are also irrational. And the cool thing is, it turns out, if you pick a real number at random, the probability that it's irrational is one. So you guaranteed, more or less, unless you're super unlucky, to pick an uh, irrational number, if you just pick real numbers at random. And why is that? Because the rational numbers are countable, you can count them, but the real numbers are uncountable, you cannot count them. So it's very, very, very neat. And of course, the next video will talk about more crazier numbers, which are called algebraic and transcendental numbers. Uh, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.